All right, you've seen the product, now it's time to take action. It's all about that miracle food. My man Chakra Doctor has put some of the greatest superfoods on the planet here in one bottle for you. I know we see COVID going crazy and a lot of different things, testing our immune system. This right here is a perfect cleanse and reboot, great for the immune system, and a great anti-inflammatory miracle food. Tell them Viral Hip Hop News sent you. Let's go. Nice. Could, could you go into for us? I mean, it's not every day that somebody gets to talk to a billionaire. So, and we're doing it for free, which we definitely appreciate. Um, could you go into your daily routine and what it takes, you know, not only to, to get to a million and a billionaire, but to, to keep it, to sustain that? What do you do every day? Like, I do one thing. I do one thing every single day. I learn. I okay. learn. I learn. I learn. Because that would, you know, business is the ultimate sport. You guys know with the podcast, right, how competitive that is. You're competing with millions of podcasts, trying to get attention, trying to get sponsors, trying to get advertisers, trying to get listeners. It, it's not like there's a season where, you know what, I'm going to trade this guest for, you know, from my podcast for a guest on another podcast or the season's over, right? Let's, you know, we get a fresh start. Everybody zeroes up. That's not the way business is. You compete all the time with everybody. And in order to compete, I keep on learning. I, I so what I do in the morning, I'll I'll still be in bed actually. I'm getting up, you know, six, six thirty, whatever, lay in bed, kill my emails off as many as them as I can get through. And then um I'm figuring out what it is I need to learn to give myself a competitive advantage and what it is I need to do with or for my companies to give them an advantage or or close some business. Work out, spend time with my family, you know, rinse and repeat. Talk about throughout your time in becoming a billionaire, becoming the entrepreneur that you are in gaining and keeping good relationships throughout your journey. Yeah, I mean, look, my friends from high school are still my best friends. My friends from college are still my best friends. I wasn't looking for new friends. You know, you pick up running buddies that come and go over, over the years, but my guys are still my guys. And I just I just try to treat people with respect and, you know, be nice. I think the, the biggest thing I've learned over the years is that nice works. You know, when you try to be a hard ass or, you know, just trying to, you know, try to prove that you're bigger, stronger, richer, faster, whatever, you know, it, it makes it harder. Like when you treat people authentically and re with respect, that word gets around and people are going to want to do business with you. And, and I think that's really what I've tried to do. Just be myself, you know, stay true to my roots, um, keep on learning and, you know, stay close to the people I'm close to. Indeed. Now, being in the streaming service and knowing that early on, watching it in this conception and seeing it now, you know, you brought up podcasts and how competitive that is. As an investor, is the podcast game something smart to invest in now um, from your perspective and then from an investor's perspective in general? It, it really comes down to the podcaster, right? You know, because I mean, I should ask you guys, right? Because you guys are the ones grinding it out. You're the ones that have to deal with it every day. Yes, um, and there's no barriers to entry, but I did invest in a company called Fireside Chat, um, which is we're calling it Podcast 2.0, because one of the challenges with doing a podcast like right now is you don't get any audience feedback while you're doing it. You know, you think you have a feel and you know, but even when people download you um, and watch it, unless you're streaming live and looking at your comments like on YouTube mm -hmm. or whatever, then you're not getting any feedback. And with um, Fireside Chat, there's little things like there. while well, you can do a live audience. The audience is by invitation only. It's not like Clubhouse where anybody can come in. It's invitation only. They've got little buttons where you can clap. You hit the applause button. You hear the, the screen button, the boo button, right? So you get tactile feedback in real time. Mm -hmm. um, you can invite people up to share and ask questions. But And then they've got the tip jar thing working, and you, we may even do some crypto stuff with it. But the whole point is by, by doing some interactive things, you really can make the podcast more advanced because it gives you that interactivity, that feedback that you really don't know. And it's like being a performer, right? You guys are performers, but you're doing it uh, like on a movie set right. where, you know, with Fireside, it's more like doing it live. Nice. That's a great idea. Um, let's talk about um, crypto. A sure. dog coin. Now, did you say that dog coin is better than a lottery ticket? And if you did, can, can you get into that just a little bit and talk sure. about crypto and where do you see that going in the future? See, I call it doggy coin with my 11 year old, but it's really Doja coin. Right. <laughs> and so um, so Doja coin started off as a joke. Right. And then as a meme, 
it just started just taking off a couple of years ago. And so I wanted, my son saw some stuff on it on TikTok a little, a few months ago, and he wanted to learn more about it. So I opened up a Robinhood account and I let him, you know, we buy, we bought some Doja coin for under a penny. We bought like $30 worth. And so he crushed it, right? Because it went from under a penny up to 40 cents. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to get me to buy him some new Jordans. And I have to explain to him, you know, that no, you know, just because the price went up doesn't mean you got the money in your pocket yet. And so, but it's been holding up there. But what it, Dogecoin basically is, is a cryptocurrency that is, and it's not the best investment in cryptocurrencies that you can make, but it's an okay investment. And because now it's only 26 cents per Dogecoin, you can put in $10 and see if it goes up. And if it goes up, you make some money. If it goes down, you can sell it or you can use it. You can go to the Mavs, uh, Mavs shop. Uh, Mavs.com and buy Mavericks jerseys and Mavericks gear or Mavericks tickets with it. So you have the upside. Whereas with a lottery ticket, you scratch, you done, right? Yeah. You know, and, and there, you get one shot. Whereas with Dogecoin, you, you can do what they call it hodling, hold on for dear life, H O D L. And so, you know, you can put in 10 or $20 and really have a chance for it to go up. And if it doesn't, you know, you can just sell it or you can spend it. Now you already have people or you already have avenues to where you can use your Doja coin in and purchase stuff. Yeah. People will call this shit crazy. And I'm sure people have called you crazy for it, but you said that anytime somebody calls you crazy, it makes you millions. So, yep. Where is this like where is this really going? Like this is crazy. I got a couple of dollars in Doja coin, but I thought it was a joke. And I'm sitting there just watching it and I don't know what to think. Some experts say it's nonsense. Some people experts say it's great and it's all it's so much. Is it just kind of like a gut thing? Just go on your gut. It's all about trust, right? Everything in the financial system is built on trust. You trust that someone's going to take that dollar bill, right? And and because you can't trade it in for anything, you got to trust that everybody believes a dollar bill from the, the government is worth something. Yes. And we all believe it, right? You know, when that debit, when you have that debit card, you put your money in the bank, you gotta you gotta trust that the bank's gonna give it back. Very true. And and so it's all built on trust. And when people believe something is worth something then and the trust grows then the value grows with it it's like gold you ain't carrying around a gold bar right you ain't spending gold anywhere somebody you see somebody with a gold bar you know they're about to get knocked out yep. you know and, and so um and even like a chain right you it, it's it's scary right but gold's only worth something because everybody believes it's worth something if all of a sudden most people said silver or platinum and gold doesn't work, right? Then it's not gonna be worth anything. People started believing Dogecoin and Bitcoin and Ethereum really have value. And when you think about it, believing in things that are digital and have value is easier um, than believing in things that are, I'm, I'm sorry, believe, yeah, believing in things that are digital having value is easier, particularly for younger kids than it is to believe physical things have value because everything you have of value is on your phone or on your PC or on your laptop, right? All the things you value the most, you've got right there in front of you. And, you know, baseball cards, gold, other things, they may have some value, but they're harder to trade. You got to ship them somewhere. You got to get somebody to, to value it. Whereas with digital, it's just a lot easier. And so whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, Dogecoin, MakerDAO, um, any of these cryptos, you know, it's just once now that people have started believing in it, it's easier to trade. And the under thing, the underlying thing you just got to remember, supply and demand is undefeated. You know, once people generate demand, if you can fulfill the supply, then you're going to win. And that's what's worked with Dogecoin. That's what's worked with Bitcoin. That's what's worked with Ethereum because they're just easier to deal with. You know how many they're going to make, even Dogecoin, you know that you know there may be billions of them, but they're only adding 5 billion every year. And so 5 billion of a growing number is a declining number, which means you, know, you can use it as a currency. Yeah. And so everybody needs to do their homework when they look at it as an investment, but it's legit. I mean, I got a lot of money in crypto. It's not just playing a game because I, I think it's legit and I know it's legit. Right. Now, I heard someone saying, you know, they talk, they say, you know, money in the stock market, obviously, for some people is different. Other people, it's a different story. They say money in the stock market, 
you know, at some point the stock market is going to crash. So it's better to invest it in, you know, like gold and precious metals. What's your perspective on that? Supply and demand is undefeated, right? Stocks go up because the demand is there. Stocks go down when more people are selling than buying. Gold goes up when the demand is there. I'm not, I'm not a fan of gold for the reasons I kind of mentioned. I think it's old school. And because you have to deal, you have to mine it, physically mine it. And that's a lot. Um, you got to find it and then mine it. And then you got to deal with gold. It's, it, you know, a gold bar is heavy. <laughs> and that's a lot of work, you know. And so I think old school, old ways, gold was fine. Commodities, you know, same kind of thing. But, um, you know, a lot of the gold isn't based off of the intrinsic value. You know, it's based because of jewelry. And people think they like gold. And so, you know, commodities, I think, are OK, other than gold and maybe silver. Um, but I, I just think digital assets are so much easier to buy and trade and control. You can carry all your Bitcoin around on a, on a, a physical wallet in your, your, in your wallet. Right. And you can have millions of dollars worth and it's tiny. It's just it's just so much easier. And I think in a digital age, that's going to work out better. Let me ask you first. Sa saving money. Um what is your you know perspective and your strategy on on, on saving money um, and investing at the same time? Can you give us yeah? A so a couple of things there. One, if you have a credit card and you have debt on it in the past thirty days, that's the first thing you pay off because that credit card company charges you nineteen twenty nine percent, and you can't take that money and make that much money somewhere else. I don't care who you are. I couldn't just automatically make that much money. And so the first thing you do is you pay off your credit card debt. You pay off any debt, student loans, whatever, as much as you can um, and get that out of the way because that debt keeps on stealing your money. That interest keeps on stealing your money every single day. And I don't like people stealing my money. Yeah. And so that's number one. Number two is you got to save a cushion, right? At least six months. You know, you got to put off getting whatever it is you were thinking about buying and, and live like a student because we saw with the pandemic, you just don't know when shit's going to happen again. And, and so you want to have that cushion of six months in the bank. Then after that, once you start saving, you can start doing your homework and look at investments. But what I would tell you is know your friend or your friend's brother or your aunt's uncle's sister, you know, doesn't know something better than you do. Right. Where people go bad is there's somebody that somebody said is smart and they trust them. You got to be able to do your own homework. You know, if, if it's you just worked your entire life to save this money and you busted your ass to get to this point, you can't just, you know, ready, fire, aim. You've got to do your homework. And once you do that, that allows you to be prepared to keep on making bigger and bigger investments if you keep on saving money. How many streams of income should an entrepreneur uh, um, strive to have in order to become a billionaire? One good one. <laughs> it's like in the NBA, the Kiki mm -hmm. Vandeway rule. If you can hit a shot from one spot on the court every time, okay, you might be able to make a roster. If you got two spots on the court that you can hit a shot from, you're probably going to be really good. If you look where, you know, um, Luca, he's got his same spot where he does that step back three every time. <laughs> you know, if you look at Chris Paul, right elbow, right? You look at Kawhi, right elbow. Those are their sparks and they just put up that pick and roll and they get to their spot and they pull up and business is the same way. If you can get one really good stream of revenue, that's great. If you can grow it to two, that's NBA calendar cal caliber. And then if you get it to three, you're hall of fame. And, and so that's kind of the way I look at it. It's good, man. This is Sam Ant, CEO of Viral Hip Hop Means. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of y'all who are going to check out this documentary. Shout out to my man, Lonnie Fresh. Do me a favor. Go to YouTube right now. Go subscribe to Viral Hip Hop News, one of the best hip hop platforms out here right now. We also have the Hub, Hip Hop News Uncensored, of course, a podcast, the baddest podcast out, the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. We drop seven days a week doing this thing 100% independent. There was not one day that I was at work on the Fresh Prince of Bad Ass, but I wished I was somewhere. Now, let's talk about the Players Club because you, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that's like your first major role in a movie, right? Taking over the game. Really appreciate each and every one of y'all you can grab merch on the youtube site you can talk to me on there and much more sam and ceo of viral hip-hop news appreciate each and every one of y'all oh god you the man cast i spit white like a clan mask and i'm a hustler